Good afternoon. Just had to let the dog out. He doesn't care whether I'm live streaming or not. If he wants out, he wants out now. <laughs> so good afternoon, District 73 and beyond. My name's Kim McCarthy. I'm a candidate for state representative in District 73 here in Greene County. So that includes the cities of Beaver Creek, Bellbrook, Fairborn and Yellow Springs, as well as the townships that surround them. So I come to you live from my porch every Friday, hence Front Porch Friday, um, in order to connect with the voters and allow people to understand who I am, what I stand for, what I will fight for when elected, um, because COVID has really put a damper on getting out into the community. And obviously this is a great way to reach a lot of people from the comfort, both of us from our own homes. So here I am. Today, we're going to be talking with uh, Tony Corvo of Beaver Creek. He is part of the Tax Busters Pack that is running a campaign against the upcoming Beaver Creek income tax levy. It's going to be on the ballot in November. So, um, you know, I pay a lot of attention to taxes. Being an accountant, um, I started my civic um, political career, examining the budget of Green County. And, um, you know, obviously I pay a lot of attention to the funding from the state. You know, our schools are suffering because of a lack of revenue. And of course, you know, we've cut $6 billion in revenue over the last 15 years because of continual tax breaks and loopholes that unfortunately mainly go to big business and the wealthy. So that ends up putting a larger burden onto middle and working class families. And um, yeah, so that's why I've welcomed Tony on here today so we can talk further about that. So before we do that, I'm gonna do my regular update. It's 52 days to go until election day. And of course we have early voting, so it's only 32 days, oh no, sorry. Um, 22 days until early voting. Come on, Bruma. <laughs> the dog wants to come up on the couch now. Um, it's only 22 days until early voting starts. So um, we are ramping things up. We have lots of options for people who want to get involved. We have postcards that you can write. We've had thousands of postcards sent out over the last few weeks to voters in the district from people explaining why they're voting for me. And I'm very grateful to everyone who's done that. So you can message us at vote at kimmccarthyoh.com if you would like to get a pack of postcards and put them in the mail for us. And then this week, we've also ended up with our beautiful door hangers. So we are going to start lit drops. We can't knock on doors in COVID, the COVID era, but we can go and drop this on people's doors. So we're gonna start that Sunday. It's great time of the year to be out walking in the neighborhoods. It's not too hot. So if you wanna join us and come out on Sunday afternoons, I think we're also gonna do Wednesdays, but really, if you wanna go out at any time, you can get with me, I can give you a stack, give you the addresses and you can do it on your own time. So yeah, we have that. And then of course our rallies, um, it was a great time last Saturday afternoon and we're going to be doing them again this Saturday and every Saturday until the election, one o'clock in Bellbrook, two o'clock in Beaver Creek, three o'clock in Fairborn. So again, if you go to my event on the Facebook page, you'll be able to see um, where those locations are. We're gonna be changing them every week, but we need you come stand out on the street for an hour. It's fun. You get to hang out, meet um, like-minded people and you get to feel like you're doing something and helping elect people into Columbus who actually want to represent the people, not represent special interests. Okay, no corporate PAC money for this girl. I am solely powered by the people. I have hundreds upon hundreds actually of donations from individuals. So I am so appreciative of that. And um, I can't wait <laughs> for the election to be over so we find out who wins. <sighs> oh, all right, I've been running for this for a while, second election in a row. So it's literally two and a half years. So, all right, that's it from me. So let me go ahead and bring Tony in. Hi, welcome, Tony. Hi, Kim. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. 
All right, so let me just introduce Tony, uh, give you a little bit of a background on him. He is retired from Wright Pat. He has a PhD in physics um, and he's still working there now as a contractor. So he's lived in Beaver Creek since about 94, which actually is when I arrived in America. Yeah, I arrived in, in America from Australia in that same year. Arrived well, in hey, Zena, hey, so. hey, Kim, I was born in Italy. Oh, you were? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, did you come over as a kid or? Oh, yeah, it was an, actually it was a long time ago in 58. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Um, let's hear it for the immigrants. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is Tony's third time that he's been involved in this um, campaign against an income tax in Beaver Creek. I guess it's about five times Beaver Creek has attempted to put this on since the early 90s. So he's got a lot of experience in this regard. So um, welcome, Tony. Thank you. Thanks for Thank coming you for on. Me. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I have um, a great desire for people to be educated on what they vote on. So I think it's important to try to get that message out there and help people not necessarily tell people what to do or how to vote, but to have them be educated so they, they can make up their own mind because there's nothing worse than, um, you know, not understanding what you're voting for. Sure, so. and, I hope, uh, and, and I hope the big uh, message today will be, here are some of the issues you may not have thought about and talk it over, talk it over with friends and family. And, you know, and if I don't have all the answers, I'll try to get you them. Okay, good, all right. All right, well, with that, I will pass it on to you. I know you've got a screen you want to share that has yep. um, some graphics, so take it away. Okay, hopefully you, you see um, the Beaver Creek Income Tax Initiative slide. Is that correct? Uh, I don't see it now, but let me make sure that I didn't, like, turn you up. Oh, yeah, you, it, here it comes. There it is. You see it? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so as, as Kim mentioned, my name is Tony Corvo, and I am a member of a PAC called Tax Busters. We actually go back quite a number of years. I believe it was started in 94 by, by um, a, a lady uh, call, whose name was Flo Thompson. Uh, she's no longer with us, but we inherited from her, and we like to carry on her efforts, uh, and we're carrying it on now with this in um, in income tax initiative. So what I wanna do is uh, basically show you what we're gonna talk about. Uh, I'm gonna really briefly give you an overview of who we are because you need to know who that is. Uh, I'm gonna give you some, some information on the income tax, some of the facts associated with it. I'm gonna talk about who pays, who doesn't pay. I'm gonna try to convince you it's a tax increase. Uh, I'm gonna try to convince you there's, because of the way it's written, there's no accountability on, on, on the city uh, as to what they're going to spend the money on and how well they spend it. And that implies there's a sort of a loss of taxpayer control between levies and income taxes. Okay, so the presentation goal basically um, is to show you that after all these years, after all these attempts, you know, I, I believe this is the fifth attempt, council uh, has basically taken the same package and basically thrown it back at us. And they still got it wrong. Um, We've been, like I said before, as, as Kim said, I mentioned, I've, I've been involved in this for a number of years. So has the other members of the PAC. Uh, we've, so we've talked to council, we've been to public meetings, uh, we've offered our inputs and basically they, 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 they've pretty much been ignored and council just keeps packaging the same, the, the same income tax initiative back to us. Uh, so what is Tax Busters? Okay, Tax Busters is a, a grassroots organization uh, in Beaver Creek. And we activate whenever there's an issue we want to tackle. Uh, for example, we have not been active since the last income tax initiative. Uh, and I believe that was in 2013 or 14, something like that. So we have not been activated since then, but, but because of this, we've got back together again and we started up the group again. Uh, we, again, as I mentioned, we activated this year because of the new uh, income tax initiative. Uh, Dave Roberts and Dave Brown are the officers of the, of the PAC. Uh, and also, who are the tax, uh, tax buster members? Uh, we're citizens, we're voters, and we're taxpayers, okay? Not everyone's all three, unfortunately. So some people are citizens, but they don't vote, unfortunately, or, uh, and some don't pay taxes. So, but we, all, we, we do all three. We're citizens, we're voters, and we pay taxes. 
and we're both retirees and current current active voters. Uh, I'm sorry, workers. Um, and we are, as I mentioned before, we are very active in civic affairs. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been to meetings. We uh, several of us have been on on, on actual city council committees uh, for the uh, city charter review, uh, for rezonings. Uh, committees and things like that. So we've been very active in the city. So we're not just people who just wake up one day and say, hey, I oppose this, you know, we get together. We, we've been together a lot, long time. We've worked together a long time and we worked with the city for, uh, for, you know, for a long time. Okay, so let's start exactly what the income tax thing is, okay? Now the city uh, wants to show you that, that through spreadsheets and through accounting uh, facts that um, revenue is going down and costs are going up. Now, the first thing taxpayers, the first mistake taxpayers make when they look at something like this is they try to get into the knickers of, 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 the, of you know, hundreds of pages of spreadsheets. And what they find is it's almost impossible to do that. The fact is, as a taxpayer, you shouldn't have to worry about whether uh, the city is saving money by, buy, you know, by buying, as I, as I put here, paperbacks, paper clips in bulk, okay? Uh, that's, a, that's a job of the city uh, employees, that's a, a job of the council to oversee that. As, as a taxpayer, you shouldn't get involved at that level, okay? So you should forget about all that. You should forget about those details because that's not your responsibility. As a taxpayer, you need to think about big picture, okay? You need to think of yourselves as stockholders, okay? The people who own the city. Are you happy with city services and where they're going? Do you want to give council a, bad, a, a blank check? Do you want to lose control over taxes and spending? And but the bottom line is, what kind of city do you want? Okay, that, that, that's where you should be thinking. And in that regards, once you start putting your mind in that mode, you start realizing that a tax, an income tax is not just another way of collecting revenue. Um, it's, it's a game changer, okay? And, we, and we'll go over some of those facts as we go through the, uh, the actual slides and presentation. And, but, and also, do you want to pay more taxes? And the type, and I said, as I mentioned, the type and amount of taxes answer those questions. So when you vote on a particular tax, you're answering all those questions because each tax has a certain execution process. And it, it, there's an exchange of power between the taxpayer and the government. Okay, some important stuff, okay? First of all, really two quick myths. The first myth, the um, myth that you, that you will hear is that, hey, I pay too much in property tax, okay? You hear a lot of people in Breve Creek say that. But the problem is in terms of city property taxes, your city property tax is only 18% of the total property taxes you pay. If, if, the, property, if, the, if the income tax is passed, only one levy will expire, will be allowed to expire. And um, that only provides you a three percentage point savings in property taxes. In other words, if you vote for the income tax, your property taxes will go from 18%, uh, I'm sorry, your city property taxes will go from 18% down to 15%. So you're not really gonna get a big reduction in your property taxes because there's schools, there's county, and there's other things in there besides just the city. Okay, so what will it mean to you? Well, here's, here's an example, okay? I, um, every working household member will see a 1% decrease in their earned income, 1% because that's what the income tax is gonna be. The income tax, if passed, is gonna be 1%. So everyone who works in that household will see a 1% decrease. Now that includes children under 18 making over a thousand per year. And, and I believe, if I understand it correctly, this is a new law by the state. Uh, other cities that, that have income taxes already were grandfathered in, uh, but I believe this is a new law by the state. So because if Beaver Creek gets, gets the income tax passed, then children under 18 are included in the income tax. Okay, so what for the average Beaver Creek household, that means, and by, by the way, these numbers come from the uh, county auditor and also from, the, from federal census data. For the average Beaver Creek um, household, you will get a $200 reduction in property taxes. However, you will pay in income taxes for that household a $700 increase. 
again, this is all averages, right? I mean, your particular house and your particular income will vary. These are just averages based on, on census data and auditor data. So what that means is for the average person in Beaver Creek, for average household, you will see a net increase in taxes. Uh, and as, as I mentioned, these uh, numbers come from the county auditor, uh, a formula they use to generate uh, your property bill, and also from census data. I've written a longer article on exactly how you could calculate how much you particularly will pay after the income tax is passed. And you could find it on Facebook. Here's the link. Uh, the article is called, Will You Pay Less Taxes Under the Proposed Beaver Creek City Income Tax? And basically, hope and a prayer is no way to fund your government. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is, you need to really see this, work it out yourself, understand whether you will pay more or you will pay less. And that, that article, uh, if, if, if you go to Facebook and, and, you, and you type in tax, tax busters, it will bring you to our page. That article was published on August 16th. And that has a lot of detail in there. Okay, can I just stop you there and ask one sure. question? Sure. So if you go back a slide, so that $700 increase in income taxes, if you work somewhere else other than Beaver Creek that has a city tax and it's more than 1%, you would have a zero increase in income tax. Is that right? You're paying to somebody else, right? You're paying that 1% already. Yeah, right. so it's people who live here and work here. Right. Primarily. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what will it mean to you? I'm um, continuing this on. Well, first of all, here's a couple silly photographs. Uh, silly in one sense, but not in another. Um, if you're if you're under 18 and you work, you will pay the income tax if you make over a thousand dollars. You know, do man, you know, to people who babysit make a thousand dollars. Do people who cut grass make a thousand dollars? Maybe not. Maybe yes. It just depends. But, but this is where we're going. Once you get into an income tax, it's a game changer. Now, for, for most people, maybe this does not apply if you're just cutting grass and maybe babysitting occasionally, but you see where this is going. It's up in the ante. It's now including a whole, a, a whole new crop of people. Um, however, even if the $1,000 threshold is not met, you still have to file tax forms. And once again, that's another game changer. Income taxes are different than property taxes. With income tax, there's a paper trail and more paper for you to fill out. And in some cases, and I, and I, um, I, I don't know all the legal details here, but in some cases, you may have to keep records as an employer. Um, I don't know how firm that is. You, know, you have to look into Ohio law and see what exactly what they say. You may have to look into the city ordinance. It's like the, uh, the actual tax ordinance for the city is 90 pages long, I believe. So you need to go in there and try to understand what that means. You may even want to ask the city. I, I would, you know, if you have a question, ask the city. Go to their website and ask them uh, exactly when do I, uh, when will I be considered an employer if I have babysitters or if I have people cutting my grass? Right, but you're talking about someone doing it for a living. I mean, if my 14-year-old babysits next door, I mean, they're not declaring that as income. Uh, if, they make, if, if, if they make $100,000. If they make under a thousand dollars, they do not. Right. They do not. But if they make over a thousand, they will. Even a fourteen-year-old or twelve-year-old who's babysitting the next-door neighbor, they're supposed to declare that as income. If they if they make over a thousand a year, wow. um, the, the the state law says under eighteen. I don't know if they have a minimum though. I I don't think they have a minimum, uh, but they, but it specifies under eighteen. Um, and I, I, you know, I think that, you know, we were talking before the meeting and here's an example where the state comes in and has some say so as to how taxes affect people. And, uh, and here's a new, I, here's, here's a new a rule that the state put in a few years ago, all the other cities who had income taxes, grandfather. Okay. So th this would apply to Beaver Creek. Okay. Uh, okay, a tax collector. Now, if you're going to have an income tax, you've got to have a tax collector. Um, th there's a good chance that the tax collector may not be local. So in other words, they may contract this out. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with RITA um, or, or some other organization, whatever it happens to be, it may not be, it may not, or it may be, but it depends on how, how they actually work it out. 
It may not be an actual physical city employee sitting at a desk in City Hall. It may be a remote person, a remote collection agency. Um, they estimate it's going to cost about a half million to operate the tax. In other words, to pay this agency or just the, the, the overall administrative parts of the tax. They estimate about a half a million dollars. Now, when you do that, of course, remember what I said about the game changer. Uh, with income taxes, you got those more forms. You got more personal information to provide. Here's a, um, a paragraph out of the current income tax ordinance that if passed in November becomes law. I'm not going to read this. You can read it yourself. But notice that I have certain things underlined. The tax administrator may examine you under oath. Uh, the tax administrator may compel any person to attend a hearing or examination, produce books, papers, records, and so on, uh, and state income tax returns. So again, you know, uh, these are things that income taxes do. We know that from the IRS at the federal level. We understand that at the state level. Now you're going to do this at the city level. Okay, who's gonna be the financial income tax losers? Um, residents not paying an income tax elsewhere, residents working in the city, townships, and Bellbrook. Bellbrook does not have an income tax. All residents, civilian, contractual people at Vite Pat, uh, workers under 18, as I, as I, as, as I previously mentioned, non-residents working in Beaver Creek, any tips, commissions, Employer gratuities, for example, uh, any, any allowances, if, if you get a gift card at Christmas, that's considered income. Corporations are taxed. Rental income will be taxed. And of course, landlords will just pass that on to renters. Uh, they're not going to absorb that and, and just be happy with it. Uh, any awards or prizes that, that you may get will be also taxed. And if you have self-employment wages, those will also be taxed. So here's all the new, all the people who will pay the new tax. Okay, income tax winners. First of all, income tax winners are people who do not have earned income. For example, retirees, okay? If you, if you do not have earned income and you're a retiree, you will not pay the tax. And, and um, I, I just wanna make a little story. I went to a, a forum a few weeks ago um, given by the other group in the city that wants to promote the income tax. And there was about 15 people or so in the audience and the audience was very pro income tax, but the audience was also very senior citizen. So at the end of the meeting, I asked, how many of you here who are for the tax will not pay the tax? And, the, and almost, all the, almost all the hands went up. So for senior citizens, it's a great deal. Uh, but again, remember, uh, it's not a windfall for you. You're only gonna see a reduction of three percentage points in your property taxes. Okay, so many council members are retired. They, they won't pay the tax. Uh, many people, the pro-tax group I just mentioned, the Beaver, with which uh, they're called the Beaver Creek Fairer Funding Committee, will not pay the tax was there, but because, because they're mostly retired. Um, uh, the so city, council, yeah. Sorry, Tony. So council members, don't they receive an income for being on the city council? Yeah, it's, it's something, I, I wanna say something like $500 a month maybe. I think it's something like that, I'm not sure. So they're not going to pay tax on that? Yeah, they'll, they'll pay tax on that, yes. Okay. Okay, yeah, All yeah. Right. yeah. But, but, but a lot of them are retired. That's what I was trying to imply. A okay. lot of them are retired, yeah. Okay, and also the, the big winner will be the city because it will see a windfall revenue stream. And, the, and it, all that money goes into a general fund. And I'll talk about that later. Now, here's a very touchy right, subject. Sorry, sorry to yeah. interrupt. No, so it's okay, go ahead. The other income tax winner... Well, I guess that's neutral. I guess income tax neutral are the people who work somewhere else already and have pay the income tax more than 1%. Yeah. That's a, a neutral situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, more on retirees. Now, I know this is a very touchy subject, but the city and, and the pro-tax group says that the, um, the law will eliminate property tax for senior citizens' fixed income. And many senior citizens, when you talk to them, say, well, I'm on a fixed income. This will help me. Now, fixed income is kind of a double-edged sword. You could be on a fixed income, but have a lot of have uh, have a lot of fixed income. In other words, you could be collecting Social Security. You'd be collecting your government retirement if you're in the mil in, in the military or civilian. You'd be collecting 401 uh, um, money, whatever the case may be. Yes, you may be on fixed income, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're only on Social Security. The other thing is. Um, 
Uh, well, I'll, I'll go through it. I, I'll, let me go through this. There's another okay. big point I want to uh, stress later on. So anyway, so keep that in mind as far as senior citizens. But as we saw before, you're only going to get a very small, a very small decrease in your in your in your property taxes. It's not as big as, as what you think it will be. Now, seniors already get a twenty-five thousand dollar reduction in assessments. If, if you go to if you go to the county auditor and you're sixty-five or older and you make less than I think is about thirty thirty-three thousand something like that. If you make a little, if you make less than that, you're able to get a twenty-five thousand uh, dollar reduction in your assessments. So they're ready, to, and I, and I believe that's a state law. So the state's already giving you kind of a break for that. Uh, for example, if I retired, I'm, I'm over 65 now, but if I retire, I do not get that 25,000 reduction because I, I, my fixed income would be more than the 30 or $33,000 they mentioned in the law. Okay, as I mentioned before, you know, again, think about Beaver Creek. Don't, don't think about income tax in general for any city. Think about Beaver Creek. Beaver Creek seniors, a lot of them are retired from the base. Not all, not all, but a lot of them are retired from the base. And again, fixed income includes all that. Now here's something else uh, which, which uh, a lot of people don't mention is that yes, you may be over 65 and yes, you may be on a fixed income. Typically from US census data, people over 65 typically have over 1 million in net worth. Now that's not true for people 25, okay? If you're 25, uh, you're just starting out, you may have graduated from school, you got school loan debts, you're trying to start a family, you buy a car, buy a house. Um, so yes, you may be a senior citizen. Yes, you may be on fixed income. It, be, it might be more than just social security. And, and, and there's a tendency for, for senior citizens to have a lot of wealth, not income, but wealth. Okay, so what they want you to think about is here's a typical senior citizen. Okay, they're worried about bills, okay? But you know, we see this all the time on, on TV. We see it everywhere. We even see it at our own grandparents. You know, it's probably more like this couple. They're having a great time. Not, not everybody, okay, not everybody, you know? And by the way, that's a good thing, okay? That's a good thing. If, if you're 65 or older and you're having a good time, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. So just keep that in mind, you know, when, when someone says, oh, senior citizens, think about it. They get a $25,000 assessment if you're making less than 30,000. The decrease in property taxes is not gonna be that much. And chances are, yes, they're on fixed, fixed income, but they're making, a, they're making a good buck on that with other retirement uh, uh, flows and, um, and also their net, uh, net worth. Okay, income tax means loss of power. Uh, an income tax is not just another way to collect revenue, okay? It's a game changer. I mentioned that. Property levies are earmarked towards specific functions, and you directly vote on them. If you're happy with the parks, you'll vote for more money. If you're happy with the streets, you'll vote for more money. This is your way of telling the city, I'm not happy with the streets. I, there's potholes everywhere, um, or whatever the case may be. So this is your way of telling the city, I write the checkbook. You're not doing what I want you to do. With an income tax, that goes away. This is all lost under, under a city income tax. Under a city income tax, it goes into the general fund, and you then have to hope that the money goes earmarked to sensible things. Now, I, I want to apologize for this graph. It's a busy graph, but I think we need to show it. I'm not going to go through all the details on it, but basically, this is uh, four cities. Uh, Beaver Creek's at the top. And the bottom three are three cities, local cities that have income taxes. And they also have property taxes, they have both. Now this is from the Ohio auditor and it's a financial health indicator. And the, and the, uh, the auditor has 17 categories it, it measures cities at. So if you look at Beaver Creek at the top and look at the rest, I'm not gonna go through every category, but I want you just to look at Having an income tax does not solve your problems, okay? In many respects, all it does is bump up the spending, but not necessarily wise spending. So you still get a lot of the problems we have in Beaver Creek. Now, real quick, Beaver Creek does not have an income tax, so category seven does not apply to Beaver Creek. That's why, that's why it's black. The other category, which is red, that was due to a tornado that hit the city in, in, uh, in 2019, if you remember that. Now, most of that money, if not all the money, uh, will be returned uh, by the feds, They're reimbursed by the feds. 
um, if it hasn't done so already. So yes, it looks like it's bad there, but it's going to be reimbursed. And the, and the purpose of this chart is sort of an eye chart to tell you, you know, that, that there's a lot of yellow and reds in other cities and they have income taxes. So it's not like Beaver Creek all of a sudden is gonna, is gonna have no more problems. I think there'll be new problems. It just be more extensive because now they have more money. Okay, so where's the crisis? Let's look at this very carefully. If you talk to the city, if you talk to the people who want the income tax, they'll say Beaver Creek cannot function under the levy system because it cannot fix the roads, it cannot pay for police and so on. But look at this stat, okay? Beaver Creek has been voted the top in the US, one of the top 100 places to live. And that was by Money Magazine. Since then, it's been voted top 10 in Ohio. And that came from the DDN, Dayton Daily News. And there have been other recent surveys from, from various sources. I'm not gonna list them all here. You could Google them if you want. And, the, and Beaver Creek continues to rank very high in what people view as a nice place to live. So where's the dis so wh where's the disconnect of that? We have malls, we have hospitals, we have restaurants coming in all the time. Unemployment, by the way, in Beaver Creek is much, much less than state and national averages. We have a continuous new business and housing permits. People want to live and build here. Um, income tax is anti-small business. Studies show that low tax rates equals low, low unemployment. And here's, a, here's also another big deal. And a lot of people don't know this. Back in the 90s, council decided that they wanted to build uh, a golf course. And um, when they built that golf course, they got into a contract or uh, some building discrepancies and so on, that ever since then, they've been paying $1 million out of our tax money to subsidize the golf course. It's somewhere around a million, it's 800,000 to a million. Every year for, for over 20 years, Beaver Creek has been paying a million dollars a year for that golf course. Now. Think about that. If what if what if and that was when we had levies, okay? And they committed us to a million dollars a year. What if we don't have levies? We have an income tax. What will they then be be able to free to, to start buying and spending money on? The fact is, Beaver Creek's often said, as you know, is often said, well, we're the only we're the only four cities in Ohio or something that doesn't have an income tax uh, for cities of our size or larger, okay? But no income tax, that's our niche, okay? That's why people come here. Um, if you talk to anybody in business and they say, how do, you, how, how do you make a fortune in business? Or how do you advance in business? And they'll tell you, you gotta find a niche. You gotta find that product or service that you provide that someone else cannot or, not, or, or cannot do as, as well as you do. That's called a niche. And that's our niche. Our niche is we have no income tax. That's not a, something to be ashamed about. I think there's something to be proud about because we have all these things happening. Top 10, uh, uh, great places to live. Top 100, great places to live. And we don't have an income tax. That's because, and this is very important, when we have a levy system, we're putting council on, a, a city council under the gun to make sure they spend their money wisely. Okay, some real quick final thoughts. Again, income tax revenues go into a general fund controlled only by seven people. Um, and also remember that even with levy restrictions, uh, past councils found ways to burden us with a million dollar golf course. Think what that would happen with a general fund. Without control, city will, will be back with requests for tax, ad, uh, tax increases as has occurred in surrounding cities. What I mean by that is all those cities now that are charging one and a half, two and a half, whatever the case may be, all started out asking for 1%. And now they're all at much higher and they have property taxes. So, so we know it, it's the same old song. And now I know it, they know it, you know it, but some of you will vote for it anyways. But we know this is true. We know this is how governments work, okay? But we continue to fall for it. We continue to vote for it. And the question I have is why? Why would we do this? Why would we know that this is gonna happen because all the neighboring cities have happened this way. So why would we wanna do it here? Um, the last page actually, uh, uh, our, our Facebook page, again, if you go on Facebook, just Google, uh, I'm sorry, just type in tax busters in Facebook and we'll go to that. Now, here's what I wanna leave you with, okay? This is what council wants, a blank check. And what I'm saying is 
Don't give them a blank check. And I think that's it. That's all I have. All right. Well, that was a lot of information. <laughs> it is. A, it was a lot. I realized that. But, you know, it's one of those things where people don't want all that. They, they want the information, but they don't want to invest the time in understanding it, you know, and, uh, and it, it's a hard, it's a tough subject. You really got to get, uh, you have to really get into it. Right. All right. Did you stop your screen? No, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Did you want to? There back? we go. Okay. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Good. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you make some valid points, I guess, um, from my position um, as a candidate for state representative, you know, I think it's sad that our cities are forced to compete with each other for these tax dollars, right? You talked about the rising taxes going up because it's it's a race to the top because when you have people living and working in, you know, different communities, if their tax rate isn't higher, they don't get anything from the residents if they're working someplace else. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a well, well here's what I would say to that though. If 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 I have some time, do I have some time? Sure. <laughs> okay. Well, here's what I would say to that. I mean, yes, it looks unfair at certain level. When, on the other hand, um, many times we have a choice as to where we want to live. And, um, and you know, if, if it's, it's the old problem where if I want to live on the top of a mountain and build my log cabin there, and then I complain I don't have internet, you know? So it's like one of those things like you, you, you have to understand where you're moving to. You have to understand the limitations. Not all, I, I don't think it's necessarily right to have all cities exactly march into the same tune. Allow some flexibility between the cities uh, allow people who like to live in city A, in type city A's, type A cities, sorry, uh, to, to move there and type B cities to move there. Um, now, you know, a lot of times you go where the jobs are, I understand. That. Yeah, I was going to say, not everyone has that luxury. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but, but for example, you know, if you live, you know, if, 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 if you work on base, there's all these cities around here you could, you know, you could live in. Right, right. Yeah, well, I mean, like I mentioned before we started talking, you know, I think the local government fund has been cut by over a billion dollars over the last um, 15 years. So um, it has put pressure on a lot of different cities. And um, I understand that people do go to Beaver Creek because there is no city tax. And, you know, what will happen if you lose that, you're just going to become one of the other cities that do. And yes. Bellbrook, that, you know, I live in Sugar Creek. Um, Bellbrook you obviously doesn't have a, a tax either, but um, yeah, I don't know if there's a simple answer, um, but you know, I do know that taxes are a necessary evil and right. that, you know, they are used to create a lot of good things for our communities and um, I'm not afraid of paying them and I hope people are uh, not afraid of paying them either, but you know, there has to be accountability like you say and um, you know, it, it's a complicated situation, but I do appreciate you coming on and explaining that. And I hope people have uh, had a chance to um, absorb it. And, um, you know, it's a big decision for Beaver Creek. Do they know how much revenue they're predicting it will generate? You said half uh, a million in costs, but did you mention what the yeah, income Yeah, um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna throw out a number. I, I should have this number. I, I don't have the number, I'm gonna throw it out. I believe it's 20 some million, but I, I'm not sure about that. Okay. I, I believe if you go on the city website, it might be there. Okay. All right. And they also talk about, I mean, this is a positive that 75% of employees live outside of, of Beaver Creek. So you would be getting income from a lot of um, employees that don't live here that wouldn't be paying. So I guess that's kind of a, a positive, but um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Tony. I appreciate right. your you. time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate that you're involved in local politics. It's important that uh, people do that. So I thank you for that. All right. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Thank Have you. Have a good day. You too. All right. So um, thank you, Tony. All right. That is it for today. Um, I actually don't have anything lined up for next week. I've been busy doing all kinds of stuff for the campaign. Um, so if you have any ideas on what you'd like me to talk about, shoot me a message and I'll see what I can do. I may try to get the pro income tax people to come on to present the other side because, um, you know, it's good to see both sides of the story so you can make an informed choice. So anyway, thank you everyone for joining me today. It's a beautiful, cool day for once. So enjoy your Friday and your weekend and we'll see you next week. Thanks.